This is the uh, face of the giant George Jones puppet head. As you can see, it's gigantic. These are his eyes that will be turning constantly. The effect is an opening and closing. They'll be encased around with his face here. And they constantly open and close. <coughs> this is his nose, ah, which will go here, of course, between the eyes. And down here, this is his mouth, which is basically right now just a large door. It'll open and close, and be a, there'll be a sound-activated system inside that'll open, that will trip a, an electric eye as it opens, and sound will come from his mouth. That'll be activated by a rope that'll go up to the ceiling and hang down so that the viewer can stand here in front of the face and pull on the rope, opening the door and getting a little sound show, too. Ready? Hi, my name is Wayne White, and I'm here in Houston, Texas at Rice Gallery, building the world's largest George Jones head for uh, the Rice Gallery uh, installation program. Mine is called a big electric fan to keep me cool while I sleep, and it's a 22 foot long uh, puppet head with a moving mouth, moving eyes. It has a peep show inside its brain. And there'll be a little side show here in the gallery called Ice House. And it's my, um, it's my tribute to George Jones, the country music singer, who I think is a great artist. It's my tribute to Houston, Texas, where George Jones has spent a lot of time and recorded a lot of hit records. Uh, my tribute to Houston, as far as the environment of Houston goes, the, the heat and the humidity and the, the idea of keeping cool at night and the idea of what it was like before it, air conditioning. All of all this history and, and myth comes together for me in this. And I wanted to um, get back into the land of puppets, which I originally started out in. I, uh, I started out as a painter in Tennessee, but uh, at the time when I was in school, I started doing puppets as, uh, as just a fun thing, as a, as a hobby. I would do them at keg parties and at people's houses and stuff. But I really wanted to be a painter. And then when I got out of school, I decided I was going to be a cartoonist. And that's why I moved to New York to meet Art Spiegelman and work at Raw Magazine. At the same time, I was still doing these puppet shows. And I carried that with me to New York. And I was doing, doing them in galleries and stuff. And sure enough, what became started as a lark or as just a sort of a, a fun side thing became central to me because I got a job doing a kid's show in Nashville while I was living in New York called Mrs. Kabobble's Caboose. And that was the beginning of this kind of journey, journeys that I take traveling somewhere and creating some kind of weird puppet. That I traveled to Nashville and created this set for uh, a kid's show, went back to New York with the kids show in my portfolio and immediately got a job on a show called Pee Wee's Playhouse in 1986. And that's sort of, everything kind of fell away from there. The, the painting and the illustration and the cartooning suddenly became second. And all of a sudden I was a, a puppeteer, a real puppeteer and a puppet maker and a set designer. And I worked four years on Pee Wee's Playhouse, won three Emmys for my set design and puppeteering. And uh, that became that sort of sort of became the, the role, the model for my life from then on. When I was first presented with this proposal, I, the space, of course, was the number one element. Gigantic, gigantic room. And I immediately thought, well, I want to make something giant. And I thought, wow, this would be a great way to bring the puppet back in. Because I had this small George Jones puppet head that I was going to make a puppet from, but I never got around to it, so it was just the head. And I thought, that's it, I'll just lay this puppet head in this giant space. So it's like, it reminds me of a lot of different things. It reminds me of a giant uh, relic from a lost civilization that worshipped country music stars. It reminds me of some kind of weird little toy that's being grown large, and the room itself is the box that the toy came in. Um, and it also just reminds me of my old puppeteering days on Pee Wee and, and, and 
all the different kids shows I did in LA only come came coming back in some kind of weird mutant form you know it's like the revenge of of Saturday morning puppets you know when I was first invited to Houston and Rice to um, to to uh, check out the space and, and, and come up with an idea. The whole time I was in Houston, and this was in June, it was very, very hot. It was like 102, 103 degrees every day. And this song called Ragged But Right became, became stuck in my head. And it's an old folk song that uh, George Jones uh, did his own version of. And it's a song basically about sort of an independent uh, gentleman, bohemian type, who likes to live his life as he likes to live. The lyrics are, uh, a big electric fan to keep me cool while I sleep, and a little baby girl to play around at my feet, a porterhouse steak three times a day for my board that's more than any loafer in this big town can afford. And that song just kept going over and over in my head, especially the part about the big electric fan to keep me cool while I sleep. When I was laying there in my air-conditioned hotel room, I just couldn't get it out of my mind. And so I thought, well, that something is, my gut is telling me something. So I, I immediately thought, that that's, the, that's it, you know? Plus the George Jones connection with Houston. It was like something was back calling me, and it just was a natural, uh, instinctive thing to... Uh, do this George Jones hit and base it on that song. It's the world's largest George Jones puppet head, for sure. <laughs>